With the tax season approaching year in year out, many small businesses complain about tax rates and how much they spend on it yearly. If you need a way to save money as a business and write off some of your expenses, here's a video that's going to help you with that. Hey there, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at top 10 tax write-offs in Canada and explaining what tax deductions are in the process. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. Give this video a thumbs up and click on the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. A tax write-off is another name for a tax deduction. And a tax deduction simply means a channel through which your business can reduce how much you eventually pay as taxes when it's time. The higher your deductions, the lower your business income and your final bill when it comes to the CRA. Now, not all expenses qualify as write-offs. For example, for an expense to be categorized as a write-off, it has to be recognized by the CRA as a cost incurred for the sole purpose of earning business income or running business operations. Here are the top 10 tax write-offs with examples. The first one is travel expenses. Wait, this doesn't mean a trip to LA or Las Vegas with all the crazy bills. This can mean a bus ride or an Uber ride to the next two streets. As long as it is related to business activities, it can be a legitimate write-off. For example, if you're a public speaker or a home service agent, any money spent on transport could be recorded and written off, as long as you have the evidence of this expenditure. The next one is advertising or marketing expenses. This includes website ads, radio, TV ads, newspaper, magazine ads, paid search results, and hiring offline marketers to help publicize your business. This counts as a write-off because it is an investment into running of the business and it will in turn produce income for the business. This can also include influencer marketing, which is something that most businesses are running towards nowadays with the rise of social media. Just endeavor to keep all your receipts because you could get audited and you would need to provide them. The next one on the list is professional fees. If your business pays for external help or for certain assignments, you can write it off. If you hire freelancers, accountants, lawyers, consultants, and any other service in line with what your business needs, you can write it off your tax bill. This also includes monthly salaries and wages if you have a team of people working for you in your company. And even if you're a one-man business, any extra hand you hire and pay can be a write-off on your tax when it's time to pay up. The other one is office supplies. Office supplies such as paid subscriptions which your business works with monthly or yearly can be written off. If you have a tool you are subscribed to for the sake of your business, you should keep a record of these transactions so that you can present them to the CRA if you're ever audited. Subscriptions such as Adobe Pro, Jasper AI, Grammarly Premium, things like that can be written off when filing your taxes. The other one is food and entertainment. I can see you smiling, but if your business has a lunch allowance for employees or you organize a get together of some sort, it should reflect on your tax statements and it can be written off as long as you can prove that it happened. If you host a function, fundraiser, or any event related to your business activities and growth, you can try to write it off. As a small business, if you decide to give out to orphanages and charity homes, you can write it off as long as the charity homes or orphanages are registered with the Canadian government. If grants are given to businesses or scholarships to students, they can be written off. Whatever is given out on behalf of your business can be written off as long as you can prove that you did that. Another one here is business use of home expenses. This applies to people who basically work from home. If you're a one-man business and you work from home, you can write off your home expenses or a portion of your home expenses related to that business such as your utilities, mortgage interest, property taxes, and so on. 
You can also add a percentage of your rent if you don't own the house. This next one is called professional dues. So as a person, you might be obligated to pay certain bills annually or monthly to keep the status of your business as a registered business. These costs, as heavyweight or light as they may be, can be written off. If you're a doctor or a lawyer or a psychologist and you have to pay for a license to operate, for instance, without these licenses, your business might be shut down, you wouldn't be able to create income, so these can also be seen as expenses that earn your business income and are recognized by the CRA as write-offs. Bank and payment processing fees. If you use a bank that takes a lot of charges from your account when you transact business, you can keep the records and write them off as business expenses. This can also apply to invoice fees, minor deductions here and there. And this gets me to one more point, which is loan interest. If you take a loan on behalf of your business and you have to pay interest on it, it may be pricey, but the good thing about this situation is that those expenses can be written off because it was an expense incurred by the business. With all this, this video was just to help you understand what type of expenses you should be tracking before tax season comes. This is in no way financial or tax advice and you should consult a tax professional before filing your taxes. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you like this sort of content. Till next time, I'm Peter and I'll see you soon.